tremendous support from the industry and a commitment to absorb the graduates for all the first five batches straight away to the industry, like, you know, organization like Ports Authority, Air Lanka, and, you know, road development authorities, and, you know, various kinds of uh, ministries which support these kind of things, all the fri freight organizations and things like that. So I guess when uh, there is a demand and a request for a university by the industry, that says a lot for employability of the graduates as well, because sure. it's in line with the demand as well. Exactly. So because we were talking about transport and engineering, the, this traffic light project, was it also a project with respect to the university, uh, yeah. Morito University? Yeah, you probably would have seen that. Now, long time ago, I think about eight, nine years ago, we, we developed this traffic light system. Remember that over those days it was a PC system which was imported from the UK very expensive now traffic lights certainly I mean being engineering faculty we have lots of engineers we should be able to design and uh, which is a joint project by the University of Moratua and at that time Road uh, Development and Construction Corporation RCDC we developed this traffic light system which is a multidisciplinary project where you have the input from civil engineering electronics mechanical all that input and uh, that was actually developed and commercialized. And you probably will see that the major part of Sri Lanka, you have Uniroad traffic light system. Uh, that actually saves a uh, tremendous amount of foreign exchange that should have gone out of the country. So likewise, um, university, we have uh, expertise. And uh, we have, we call this seed need kind of a concept. And uh, we are- Seed need? Seed need, yeah. What does that No, mean? that's actually a Japanese concept. Okay. And, uh, uh, we had this uh, project with the Japanese Tohashi University where in Japan you have a very close collaboration with the university and industry and uh, they identify the needs of the industry and the seeds of the university and then you match them together. So we actually promote that, actively go out of the university to the industry and identify their problems, their needs, their research and development needs, product development, new, you know, finding out solutions to the problems and things like that. Then we take it to the university, we identify who can provide the expertise, and then we match them together. So we have done several projects like that. For example, Danko to a porcelain and, you know, a couple of projects. And uh, we have we maintain a full database of uh, these needs and then a database of seeds and then try to match. So that is very interesting, the seed-need combination and matching the seed needs. Right, yes. So let's talk more about it after this sh short commercial break. Stay with us. Boring, not our fault. No, that's our fault. Hunt and Rock every Saturday, 6 p.m. Catch you live in action on Prime TV with a blend of music filled with variety. Rock and roll, country and western, you name it, we have it. Music with the devil. Welcome back. You're watching Roundtable and we are speaking to Professor Ananda Jayavardhana. He's the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Muratua. And uh, continuing our discussion from wealth creation, the ecosystem where it encourages innovation, we also went into the departments of engineering and to see actually how the University of Muratua also had added value to many sectors, starting from mechanical, transport and logistics and many other faculties, electronics now, uh, and also 
this so the interesting connection the seed and the need, need so uh, at the same time professor if we can also touch on I think the earth resources yes. uh, department when it comes to engineering I think it's a very important section so yeah uh, earth resources engineering department as the na name implies is the earth resources and um, uh, we what we are trying to do is to you know to add value to the earth resources basically you know while producing the graduates in that area and we have actually broad based this department quite a lot to talk about the oceanography introducing oceanography to engineering and as you know that we have eight times sea compared to land so we have enormous uh, sea area that we can harness and they talked about uh, oil exploration aspect of it we now trying to introduce oceanography gem and jewelry you know value addition to minerals and you know most of the minerals that we export without much value addition right and then so those kind of aspects are the things that we concentrate and highlight in the department of earth resources engineering and i hope that you know with this kind of broad basing that we should be able to um, you know I, you know benefit uh, provide benefit a lot uh, through techniques like remote sensing you know GIS what does that mean? remote sensing um, is uh, sensing remotely so which means that basically through satellite imagery and things like that uh, earth resources we can find out things like uh, the estimate the resources uh, you know quantify them uh, mineral resources and things like that and test their uh, you know quality and things like that and also in disaster management situations you know how to coordinate these kind of activities so that uh, the planning of various kinds of infrastructure activities with these remote sensing kind of an ideas with satellite imagery and things like that so department of earth resources engineering is very much equipped with these kind of technologies and software and that is uh, that department and then we have the material science and engineering department so as well. So just uh, a moment, Professor, now always when we are talking about many aspects, these environmental aspects come into yes. the picture, yes. but uh, there's no special division for uh, under engineering for environmental science, or is it coming under each and every department right. in um, some way? Deepamala, I think environment is, is a buzzword, and everybody talks about the environment, sustainability, and things like that. Uh, in, in at Moratua, we don't have an environmental engineering department as such. As you quite rightly indicated, it applies to any discipline in that context. So in the civil engineering department, we have the environment division. It talks about environment uh, mainly related to civil engineering, water purification, the quality, and you know, you know, bacteria, inf you know, these kind of activities. And then when it comes to other departments, like chemical and process, certainly environment, so we have effluent treatment. Even in civil, you have effluent treatment. You know, the waste management. Waste management, certainly. I mean, uh, even when you, uh, any, any kind of production facility will have environment problems, so whether it is mechanical or something like that. Power generation, the electricity, when you talked about the coal power or any other kind of, uh, you know, things like that. So it is an aspect uh, which is common to any engineering disciplines. So all these departments actually consider, concentrate and provide education and, you know, look after the aspects of the environment. And uh, in an engineering way, they also try to address those uh, problems with exactly, respect to Exactly, exactly. Otherwise, we will not have a world to live. Yeah. And it is uh, something that we very, very seriously consider. So now, when you talked about the Earth Resource Department, you, was go you were going to mention about material. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, that's a separate section, is it? Yes. Separate? We have a material science and engineering department. And uh, that department actually specialized materials like metals, uh, ceramics, and polymers, and you know things like that. And that again, basically, uh, what we are, they are trying to do is to add value to local available materials and uh, and say porcelain we have these ceramics you know there is a, a very close connection with the ceramics industry and we have a problem of you know ceramic industry needing lots of energy and Sri Lankan energy is being expensive we need to actually come out with new product processes and more efficient ways of handling things and the material science and engineering is actually trying to do these kind of things when you consider materials you know that has a, a huge revolution in the world because materials can be monolithic or composite materials actually can be developed by combining several materials together and those kind of materials uh, can have a you know 
very valuable engineering properties like uh, strength, like the elasticity, like the you know resistance to heat and you know various kinds of things. So the materials engineers contribute to the uh, development of engineering, raising the standard of living of people, you know, even even going to moon and things like that uh, quite a lot uh, in that context. So that's so the support with the material science and engineering. So basically, again, an underlying